Hola, I'm Gloria Torres, your host, and I'm so excited today to have a, a wonderful guest who comes from a famous family dynasty called the Marish Company. Please welcome international promoter David Marish to the show. Thank, thank you for having me here today. Well, I, you're welcome. I, I'm glad I finally got what you here. It's yeah. been a while, but I wanted to uh, um, talk more about your family, you, yeah. the Marish Company. A lot of people are not aware how powerful they were in Hollywood. Well, what's sort of fun is that a lot of the movies they made, of course, are on Turner Classics, AMC, and a lot of the late night uh, uh, programming. And at the bottom, uh, like of the Pink Panther, it'll always say produced by Marish Corporation, etc. And when all the films open, like recently West Side Story has oh. been on, and Mid Midway has been on, and some like at Hot's been on, it opens with the Marish Corporation Presents. So I'm very proud of my family, uh, my father and his three brothers formed the Mirrors Corporation. Uh, they actually came to Hollywood many years ago and they went to work for a studio called Monogram Pictures when they were doing cowboys and westerns. Mm -hmm. And then they uh, went to work for a company called Allied Artists. And while they were at Allied Artists, they produced Moby Dick with Gregory Peck and yeah. Moulin Rouge with Jose Ferrer and Zsa, Zsa Gabor. And then they knew that they really didn't need a studio, so they formed their own, the Mirrors Corporation. And through the years, they produced 72 films. They've won 24 Academy Awards. Amazing. They've won three Best Picture Awards for West Side Story, In the Heat of the Night, and The Apartment with Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemmon. And um, my uncle Walter, uh, who is the only remaining Mirish alive today of the four brothers, has been president of the Motion Picture Academy for four times. Wow, what a family. Yeah, I'm very proud of them. But where, are you, where were you born? I was born in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, on the battlefield where the Civil War uh, took place. <laughs> Well, a uh, boy from the Midwest. Yeah, and then we moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, when I was about three or four, and grew up in Milwaukee, came out to California for two years, went to school here for two years in sixth and seventh grade, moved back to Milwaukee. I went first to the University of Colorado in Boulder, and then graduated from Ripon, R-I-P-O-N, college, a very small school with a BA in speech. Amazing. So when did you come to Hollywood? I came to Hollywood, uh, my dad and I and my mom moved here, I guess it was in the late 50s, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to work for, a, uh, for United Artist Pictures that our family was distributing all of them from, and I spent a year on the road learning how to publicize and promote a film. It was one of the best experiences I ever had. And then I went, went to work for a company called Rogers and Cowan, right. which is the number one public relations agency in Hollywood. And I worked directly under Henry Rogers, and I sat in a little corner of his big office. And every day, by the time he came in, I had to have every trade paper magazine and newspaper read and every client underlined. And since that day, I still come into my <laughs> office at 6 a.m. because that's where I learned to get up early. <laughs> and you and you still do that? I you still, still see the uh, trades? I, yep, I get up usually 4.30 every morning, read the LA Times that I subscribe to in San Diego where my wife Sandy and I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm off to the office usually by 5.30. So did you ever have any in inspiration to get involved in the family business? You no. Um, the, the fathers really decided that they did not want the sons working for them, so all of us went our separate ways. I went into public relations. One of my cousins is a literary agent, and another is in video distribution. Another became an assistant director, so all the sons went their own ways. Hmm. Did you, was any of them a role model for you or a mentor when you came to Hollywood or you were pretty much on your own? Yeah, I mean, I live with my parents, um, but uh, just enjoyed my early days at Rogers and Cowan, really learning the business under Henry Rogers, who was the best there ever was, I think. Now you've had, um, you're an international promoter, big time. You handle a lot of celebrities. And before we get into that, we're gonna show a clip just exactly what Mr. Marish does.
Sylvester Stallone signed autographs, Cindy Crawford took to the slopes, and next to Magic Johnson, Sharon Stone acted like a courtside groupie. Magic is my idol, and I can't believe he's here! It's not surprising to see big-name stars coming out in support of charity events like the National AIDS Foundation, AMFAR. We're gonna make a difference. Exactly. And they do. When Alec Baldwin winds up for the East End Hospice in Long Island and Tyra Banks plays Santa for the Center for Children and Families in New York, the donations pour in. Charity event consultant David Mirish explains why. They can bring a tremendous amount of money into that organization over and above what the organization would do without the use of celebrities. Elizabeth Taylor is one of the biggest. This year, her presence helped raise $2 million for the Macy's-sponsored extravaganza called Passport 97, which supports AIDS research. That amount is eight times the figure raised before her involvement. Richard Gere, who supports the Tibetan cause for freedom, understands star power. If it takes celebrities to get the cameras here to cover an event that is about AIDS or is about Tibet or about whatever it is, so be it. Instead of the standard United Way public service announcement, Todd Rosine, the L.A. chapter's communications director, says that using celebrities to deliver their message can be much more effective. We found out through market research that people don't respond to children in need or people in need, those images. So that's why we went with a celebrity. And for the star, association with a charity can be a terrific image builder for them as well. Most of the celebrities today have their own press agents, and the press agents are the ones that call me and introduce me to their new clients. That's an impressive tape. <laughs> that's well, it all in a nutshell, <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really what it's about. What my daughter Summer and I do today is, are these kind of events where stars like you just saw in the video as part of your show um, donate their time as you do to many of the events that you're nice enough to join us in. Uh, they want to give something back to the community right. and we do about 40 events a year and have done really over a thousand fundraising events and a lot of times people ask me why do the celebrities do it and the answer is not for the publicity it's because they really care about these events and um, you just recently went to one of our events for the American Heart Association and I know you went because you wanted to help them raise money for their fight uh, of how to stop these heart problems that people are exactly. incurring. Yeah. You want to give back to the community yeah. and, and all the kids there also I've gone with some of the other charities and golf you have golf tournaments and <laughs> ski events. Right. You have uh, soccer, everything, yeah. I mean, for all the kids and hard. Well, we do a wonderful event every Christmas for the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Orange County where we bring about a dozen television celebrities to an event and all the Make-A-Wish children of Orange County and their families are there and the stars take pictures with them, they play games with them, they go home with a Polaroid picture of the stars that they met and these celebrities are just thrilled to be able to help the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Well, you've been